What's up, champs? Welcome to another episode of the Short Shifts Fantasy Hockey Podcast brought to you by Keeping Carlson. I'm your co-host, Louis Ezekiel, and joining me tonight, my pal and yours, Shams Benamore. Shams, how are you doing this fine Thursday evening? Uh, kind of a mix of feelings. I'm fighting for a buy in one league, and then I'm fighting for a buy in the consolation playoffs in the other. So doing really well and not so well, but kind of even too. Yeah, I'm in a weird spot. I uh, I can't make the playoffs, but I can't fall out of consolation playoffs either. So mostly I'm just building up for uh, next week to try to do as best I can uh, in that upcoming consolation bracket. Uh, kind of getting my butt kicked here a little bit, but I also can't really bring up the energy to get especially concerned about it, giving my situation. Uh, let's get right into it. We got a lot of stuff to talk about here today. Uh, starting with some good news uh, for you, for the player on your team, and a guy who I really like. So uh, let's head over to L.A. Adrian Kempe is back. Oh, yeah. He's played one game on Saturday, but didn't really do much. I think he had like a shot in the head or something like that. But after that, uh, played both uh, two games so far this week. And he's, and this is literally, um, sounds weird, but this is two game total. Two goals, 14 shots, eight hits, and two blocks. And the interesting thing out of this is that uh, something special with this uh, current coach, the interim coach, is he loves shifting lines a lot. So he had him on the third line with uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois. He had him back on the normal first line with uh, Byfield and Kopitar. He even played some defense on a four-on-four last game. So he's kind of just almost like that Swiss Army knife. And then to be able to do all of that with those hits shows that he's at a healthy part and just kind of bring some life back in the overall team. And that obviously, you know, Kempe is going to be taken in all leagues, but this is one of those, a boost for everyone. Hell, even for the goalies gives them a better chance to get a win. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I'm up against Kempe this week. Uh, I'm up against Dowdy and Riddick. But again, doesn't matter if I win or lose. So I am just very happy for Kempe. He's a guy I really like. Um, I had a lot of L.A. players last season and really enjoyed it. Uh, so I got a, a soft spot in the heart for them. A uh, team I've never had an especially soft spot for, but that is absolutely red hot at the moment, are the Chicago Blackhawks. They have been absolute fantasy gold recently, including back-to-back seven-goal games against Arizona and Anaheim. Obviously, you have Connor Bedard leading the way. Not going to be available uh, very many places, but three goals and five assists over the past two games. Another pair of assists against Arizona on March 5th bring him to 10 points in the last four games. He's taken 17 shots in the last three games. He's played over 20 minutes in six of the last seven. Uh, You know, they're just really letting it all hang out here, letting him feast as much as he can. Uh, Seth Jones has also been a hot streak. I know that has been a bone of contention for both of us as you faced him last week and I've got him this week. Uh, He's got one goal and four assists in the past two games. Uh, He had two goals in that March 5th game against Arizona. So he's got seven points in the last four, 18 shots over the last four games. Not quite Bedard rates, but real good for a defenseman. Just continues to play monster minutes, sometimes approaching 30. Um, He actually got some rest in that drubbing against Anaheim. Only played 20 minutes, uh, even though he still uh, was able to hit the score sheet. So very nice for Seth Jones. Uh, If you're thinking about somebody who might actually be available, Tyler Johnson has had a goal in each of the seven goal games. He had a goal in the game before that and three assists prior. Uh, That brings him to six points uh, in the last four. He's getting top power play time, uh, though he has been stuck on one of the three line fours that Chicago has that don't feature Connor Bedard, uh, most recently with Taylor Radish and freshly returned from injury Andreas Athanasiu. Not a great even strength spot, but the Chicago power play has been very good. Four goals in the last three games might be an interesting uh, as a guy who's widely available. Uh, And they have Friday, Sunday home games remaining this week against L.A. and San Jose. Uh, So if you're looking to, you know, get a piece of this exciting Chicago offensive play, uh, Tyler Johnson might be your best option there. Uh, We've also got a team uh, over in the East who is starting to get healthy. Uh, They've got a nice schedule next week. Uh, Tell us what's going on down in the U.S. Capitol with the Washington Capitals. That, uh, as you hit, basically they have most of their team back. Right now they have uh, 
Oshi and Wilson has come back. And uh, right now they have a top, and this is where we kind of get the bait, a top nine, depending on how you want to order this. Obviously, the Ovechkin, Lapierre, Oshi line is the first line. And then you have, as they list it, Strom centering Milano and Miroshenko, and then McMichael centering Pacioretty and Wilson. So that's kind of an interesting thing to have them all back, but I kind of wish that maybe Strobe would have been with the other two lines instead of uh, manning a line of his own. And then for the, they're kind of doing, well, Ovi's on both uh, power plays, so it doesn't really matter which one's won, but they're kind of doing a 60-40 split with Oshi, Strobe, Lapierre, and Carlson on the first one, which had 60%, and then Patch Reddy, Wilson, McMichael, and Rasmus Sandin on the second. So. While this is all good, I have a question for you. Is that like I keep on hearing the lines are good, or you know, the team has a great setup for the next few weeks, but I have Oshi in two leagues right now, and he came back for two games and he has the exact same sat line of both one shot, two hits. How long of a line are you going to give to a person that you know, I, I'm with you, they have a great schedule, but. That's just kind of something that's scaring me. Was it maybe Mantha not longer there anymore is mixing things up or am I just being too impatient here? I mean, it's not ideal, but you got to remember this is a team that has only scored two goals total over the last two games. They got, um, you know, they, they faced a shutout and then had two games uh, in a seven, two loss or two goals. I'm sorry. in a seven, two loss. So, you know, that obviously is holding them back. They're not really getting an opportunity to contribute there. Um, my feeling is I think I, I like, you know, Oshi, I think is getting the nice deployment pretty well. I would hold on to him for next week. I don't know what your waiver wire options are looking like, but, um, you know, Oshi is, is, uh, owned in, in quite a few leagues. Um, you know, maybe not, uh, maybe not to the same level as, you know, your Stroms and some of those other folks. Um, you know, your Tom Wilson's, I think he's more widely owned. Um, but yeah, I do think I would hold on. Uh, and that kind of does bring us into the next section that we wanted to talk about because, you know, I don't want to step on uh, matchup maximizers' toes here at all. Um, but, you know, I think there are a lot of people who are in a position maybe as early as Friday here uh, when the podcast will probably come out for most people um, where, you know, you're thinking about that next round. Um, and so next week, um, there are some teams with no Tuesday games, and they have some good off-night schedule. Uh, and the four teams uh, that are not on that really busy Tuesday, remember Sunday is a busy day next week as well. Um, but you've got Washington with four games and three off-nights. You've got uh, Seattle with four games and two off-nights. And then Arizona and Dallas each have three games with two off-nights. So those are some... Uh, teams that are going to offer you a little bit more in terms of streamability and being able to fit players into your roster. Um, so I thought it might be beneficial for you and I to run down some of these teams. I'll take Washington and Arizona. You can take Seattle and Dallas. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the guys who uh, are available and might be interesting here. You already mentioned Dylan Strom. Um, now he's 40% rostered in Yahoo, which means he's probably owned in uh, a higher percentage of the actual active leagues at this point here. Um, like Oshi, no points in the last two games, but again, Washington's only scored twice total in that period. Uh, and prior to that, he had eight points in four games. Admittedly, this is against pretty bad competition, Chicago, Pittsburgh, Arizona, and Philly. Um, but I like him for those three off night games. I think that is quite valuable. Uh, so I take a look at him if he's around in your league. Uh, you mentioned Hendricks Lapierre. Uh, again, you know, another guy with a no points in the last two games skid, but he had five and five games uh, and is, you know, getting some nice deployment there. So those would be a couple guys uh, that I might look at for Washington. Um, why don't you tackle Seattle for us? Uh, we've got a few interesting uh, folks to keep an eye on, one of whom I grabbed in preparation for next week. Oh, yeah. it's This is kind of one of those situations where you're just kind of uh, playing a guess of who has what line because they kind of play a little even. But for me, the prime person to target is uh, Matty Beniers because he's kind of seemed to be turning it back on. And for that, I would lead on first. And then you got Bjorkstrand, who is kind of the maybe the higher variance play. He's probably going to be more likely to get your goals and assists, but he might end up with, you know, 
not too much because he kind of goes hot and cold with the, the rest of the team as he's not being leaned on completely. And then lastly, if you'll kind of want a someone that's probably going to be an available in a good chunk of leagues, but he does hit those bagger stats is Yanni Gord, who has good amount of hits, if that's a category that you care about. Yeah, one thing I like about um, Gord is he's getting some nice minutes. All three of those players have three points over the last four games, so not as exciting maybe uh, as some of the streaks that those Washington players put together, but you know, pretty decent as well. Um, I've just got one guy who I've got on my interesting list from Arizona. You know, you don't have a ton of availability. And actually, we're going to talk about one guy who's just uh, real cold for them right now. Um, but Nick Bukestad, who's only 12% rostered, uh, he has four points in four games prior to Thursday. He also took 12 shots over that streak. Uh, not a name that probably inspires a ton of confidence or gets you super excited, um, but he's one guy that I might take a look at um, from Arizona. Some of the other names, um, you know, your Coolies, your Gunthers, um, they haven't been very hot lately. Uh, still might be worth a stream, you know, if you want to take a shot, but um, haven't really been putting together kind of the streak that you might hope for. And then on the eyes of Dallas, who is just going like a juggernaut the last few games, is that you know, a lot of their bigger names are obviously going to be taken, but some of the lower owed ones maybe be um, Mason Marshman, who has been having a good couple of games, having the three uh, points in the last three games. And the interesting thing is, is that um, Sagan is going to be close to coming back. So maybe not the next game, but kind of nearing. So if he joins that line again, that helps kind of bring up the offensive po- firepower there. And then, Maybe depending on your league, if it's uh, a little bit shallower, you got Logan Stay COVID, who might be around for uh, people that were a little bit impatient with him. And then, you know, that's kind of be kind of the idea is that I would have a kind of a feel and find is that I'd probably go with Stay COVID first, but he's probably rostered in more leagues depending on the situation. And then I'd be fine with uh, a marshman, especially with the understanding that there's a good chance since we're talking about next week, that Sagan should be there for most, if not all of the games. Yeah, Stan Coven, you know, he's had that three-game no-point skid, but uh, eight points over five games before that, including, of course, that four-point outing against San Jose. Uh, Yeah, he could definitely be kind of the high upside stream for you, potentially, so I like to see that. All right, uh, so we talked about the Caps kind of recovering a little bit, but we do have quite a few injuries to discuss um, let's head to Winnipeg first. Uh, what's the latest here? I know we lost uh, Mark Shifley to illness. We were talking a little bit. Uh, I was talking a little bit last show um, with Derek about, you know, these recent illnesses. But um, sounds like he's going to be back. Um, how about some of these other guys who are dinged up here or who are trying to make a return? Yeah, you'll know before us because uh, we're recording before the Winnipeg uh, game. But uh, right now, actually, they're playing tomorrow. so. Uh... Either way, Shifley is set to, there is a possibility of him playing tomorrow, but there's no set uh, idea if he's going to be available or not. Uh, now, Menestikov uh, was hurt in the last game due to a shot block, but it looks like he'll play as well. Now, the player that's not going to be around is Velarde, and it looks like they're going to decide tomorrow if they're going to send him along with the team for their five-game road trip. Now, these are kind of, Something to look into. Obviously, a player could join mid uh, road trip on his own flight, but usually the side is is if they're willing to bring him along, that's going to be the site. So watch the news around there. And then the interesting thing is is that they didn't really have the greatest game last game, so they kind of shifted things around on the lineup. So right now they have uh, Kyle Cotter with. I'm just going to say they have a placeholder here for now, but Cotter with. Shifley and I follow, and then Ehlers with Monahan and Toffoli. This is going to be the interesting thing is because Ehlers has just been hot and cold lately. And the coach has said again and again, the reason why he hasn't had Ehlers on the top line is that he doesn't like him as a right wing. He prefers him as a left wing. So having this situation, putting him down and then having both Monahan and Toffoli as the line mates really interests me on holding on to him or maybe in your shower leagues, maybe giving him a chance. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, yeah, it definitely provides uh, some real potential offensive firepower for that line. 
Uh, heading over to the Avs, um, we had Jonathan Druan, who was uh, reportedly day-to-day. We don't really have a specific timeline about that. Hopefully, uh, we have some more options. Uh, Parise and Lekkonen are out, but maybe options for Saturday, uh, according to Jared Bednar. Our top six right now looks like Nishushkin, McKinnon, and Rantanen, as you'd expect. And then you have Trennan, Middlestat, Duhame as your second line. Not obviously kind of what you're looking for, but kind of fun to have uh, these three new additions all kind of lined up together. And then your top power play uh, with Lekkonen out, Nishushkin, McKinnon, Rantanen, Middlestat, and Makar. Uh, so Middlestat getting some run on that top power play uh, with the injuries opening up some room. Um don't necessarily imagine he's going to stay there. I think that would be a bit of a stretch to expect uh, once Lekkonen is back, but uh, strange things have happened. Maybe he finds a little bit of success there, but at least in the short term, uh, that'll be a benefit um, for Middlestat. Uh, we also got a couple other injury updates. Uh, let's quickly update uh, Sam Bennett down in Florida. Uh, he's out tonight and considered day to day. Um, Tarasenko, Barkov, Reinhardt remain that top line, but uh, Anton Lundell gets some nice deployment with uh, Verhege and Kachuk on that second line. Uh, so he might be someone to watch out for if Bennett's injury uh, continues for any stretch of time. Um, and then uh, we got a little update on Mitch Marner as well, that the low body injury that he's been dealing with is a high ankle sprain, which is bad news. No one likes to hear that. Um, it was reported, I think I saw on CBS, that it is being called a mild high ankle sprain. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Um, and then you told us a little bit about Tyler Sagan's potential return. Did you want to get into any more detail there? I, I'll just be a little bit more specific with the time frame. So the coaches said that the uh, first two games of this week are not a possibility, but the final two games are in play. So the fact that they're talking about him returning this week definitely uh, entices me for thinking about how the lines are going to be. And uh, really what it is, is that as we were talking about, their top nine is pretty solidified. The only one that's kind of out like a store sum is Delandra. Like, and that's kind of where... Um, Sagan has been playing, so I would believe that he would just take that place and then he would either get uh, you know, put to the fourth line or elsewhere. So I don't think there's going to be like a, hey, wait, how the lights are going to be. I feel like it's going to be pretty set. Yeah, I think so. And then, you know, just to jump in here, um, that Ben Johnston, uh, Stankov, and although Stankov has not been in so much, but uh, that line has been pretty productive lately. Um, obviously, Wyatt Johnston getting another goal today. Uh, just got to I think I mentioned this before when we were talking about some of the the maybe the big misses, but um, thinking that he was cooked after he got bumped off of that top line point, really regretting it, which I still had him on my lineup. So uh, congrats to those who kept the faith and held on to Wyatt Johnston. Uh, kids playing great. All right, we're going to jump into a quick ad break here. Uh, we'll be back on the other side. Thank you for listening. You are listening to Short Shifts. Welcome back to Short Shifts. All right, last order of the day here. We've got five hot and cold streaks we want to talk about here. Uh, first guys on the list, um, guys that we have on our respective rosters who are cold. Uh, I'll let you get started here. Pavel Bushnevich is our first guy on the list. What's going on with him down here in St. Louis? I mean, this is a person that's just trying my patience because he has the skill. We all know it. We have seen it before. Um uh, Back in February, he had a hat trick. He scores a good amount of time, but in the last five or the last seven games, he's only gotten one assist in that whole amount. And also, the thing that really scares me is that he's been bounced off the first line. He's no longer with Thomas and Cairo. He's with Bulduk and Neighbors. I have nothing against Neighbors, and uh, but the really the big thing is is that when I drafted him, I thought they were going to be having that triple wide with the, all of their offensive people. The good news is, is that he is still on power play one. So he still has that exposure, even though the team hasn't really been having that well on the power play. So I have him in two leagues. I have a bit uh, a couple, which is a much more deeper league, which I'm very tempted to do something with, but probably I have easier people to cut. And I am leading to cutting him in a 10 team league, which is much more shallow. So it's kind of really depending on your patience level and who else is out there. So in a 10-team league, there's like 
for example, I think most uh, in this league, it's like Forsberg and Nyquist are, are not, uh, sorry, not Forsberg, O'Reilly and Nyquist are available. So there's that kind of level of players that I would be interested in swapping him out. But say in a cacuffle, you're probably going to have much more work to find someone of that quality. So I might be leading on holding him a little bit longer. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, maybe we'll bring him up and he'll get a short shifts bump like uh, Evgeny Malkin. Ever since we bagged on him, he's got uh, an assist last game and a goal here tonight against San Jose. So maybe we can do the same for Bushnevich here. Uh, the next guy is someone that I'm hoping we can give a bit of a short shifts bump to, uh, and that is uh, Sean Dersey. Four shots total over the last five games, four hits and six blocks there too. You know, he's out there on the first power play. Um, but he's just not getting it done. He's, you know, uh, not getting in on the action when they're there. Uh, it's just been a really tough hold. This was a guy who I thought, um, you know, could kind of hold things down as my top defenseman while I waited for Brandon Montour to come back. And he's obviously been pretty sketchy himself at times, extremely hot also, um, but definitely had his slow times. It's tough because, you know, he certainly is capable of producing. We've seen him do it. You know, I'm sure if I dropped him, there would be people who would be willing to bid fav on him. But it's just been a nasty, nasty cold streak here. Hopefully he can get back uh, off the schneid. Um, but then we've got another uh, couple defensemen who you might want to look into uh, who are on hot streaks. If they are available, uh, who can maybe make up for some of this uh, cold streak that Dersey is giving you. Um, you give us the start here, Cam York over in Philadelphia. Yeah, this is one of those situations where he's just purely eating minutes and he's playing a lot out of it. So really what's happening is that ever since Trisdale got hurt, he has been paired with uh, Sandheim as a top pairing and they're getting played a lot, especially there was a situation where they even had so many injuries and illnesses that they only played five defensemen. So what's happening is he's getting all the ice time. So for example, I believe this is the last five games. He has uh, a goal, three assists, 11 shots, nine hits and 22 blocks. So that's the nice thing is, is that getting a, about a two shot a game average and of uh, getting four blocks a game on average is a, just a nice amount of just peripheral stats that if those goals and assists even dry up for a little bit or never come back, this is a defenseman I'd be interested in. Now, kind of the uh, thing, as I said before, is this is kind of stemmed from the loss of Drysdale and Arista Lydon. And there's not really much news. The last news I heard is a beat writer saying, hey, there's no real news about them. So by the sounds of it, especially with the fantasy playoffs coming up, I feel like this is going to be something where you're going to be able to keep him along and uh, probably not have to worry about those two coming back anytime soon, or at least you'll hear some rumblings that they can plan for it in the future. Yeah, you know, I think uh, York, too, I think the York owners must be pretty pleased because uh, he kind of had a reputation as more of like a Kalen Addison type who, uh, you know, was sort of empty calories if he wasn't scoring, uh, didn't have a rep as a guy who was getting a ton of peripherals. So obviously to see those blocks numbers, especially uh, if you're in a Cats league, that can be a huge benefit to you. If he's, you know, continuing to get these big minutes, he's going to have the opportunity to keep putting up those counting stats. So uh, you definitely like to see it. Uh, another guy who has uh, looked really nice lately is Shane Gostas Bear. Uh, three goals, six assists, 21 shots. Uh, not so much on the peripherals, four hits and 11 blocks over the last 10 games. That's a little more in line with his reputation. Uh, only one of those points on the power play. Um, so he's getting it done at even strength, which is great to see. Um, obviously the Red Wings are going to need to wring every bit of offense out of him that they can. They've really been struggling with Dylan Larkin out in their quest to make the playoffs. I know that you and I are uh, definitely hoping that he can keep that streak up uh, regardless of whether or not he is on the fantasy team. Uh, and then our last guy here, we got to talk about Mark Andre Fleury just playing lights out. Uh, consider this a big time jinx, but he is uh, so far uh, shutting out. Uh, Anaheim with a 2 nothing lead. I don't know how much jinxing he really needs uh, to potentially continue to shut out the Ducks, but uh, of course he would be riding high uh, coming you know, uh, on a nice little streak here um, when he is on my opponent's team. Uh, he also got Frederick Anderson and Jake Gensel back this week. He got Evgeny Malkin uh, getting off the schneid, so it's a real confluence of events. But anyway, uh, tell us a little more about this little streak that Mark andre Fleury is on and why it might have some staying power. 
Yeah, in his last five games played, he has four wins and four quality starts. And the interesting thing is, is that I said only four quality starts out of the five. The one that he didn't have a quote-unquote quality start was allowing two goals on 26 shots. So even in that situation, I wouldn't call it like a horrible start. It just wasn't at that level. And really what it is, is that this is against like, maybe not the hallmarks of like the best of the best, but some of those teams were St. Louis, Arizona, and uh, Nashville. So there are some teams that have a little bit of offensive power in there. So it's not just him kind of skirting along on the easy street. And then the thing that I kind of want to keep in mind is that as we saw that they are fighting for every single point, they literally pulled their goalie in overtime just to have a better chance at scoring a goal. So they are scrapping for everything. He's playing hot. As we mentioned before, he's currently shutting out the Ducks. So they're probably going to ride him as much as possible. Probably earlier in the season, they would have said something about, hey, we don't want to wear him out. We're going to play them even. But right now it's brass tacks. They need every point that they're going to get that they're going to probably just play him as much as they can until they can't. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And, you know, maybe that means that he's kind of worn out come playoff time, but they do still have Philip Gustafson, so they've got some options there. But, yeah, uh, they they need their points just as much as uh, our dear Red Wings do. Um, and, you know, uh, yeah, uh, at least now that uh, Kaprizov is doing some scoring, uh, you know, these last few weeks, um, or uh, longer than that, but, uh, you know, he's getting a little bit more of that run support that maybe, uh, was absent earlier on in the season when they were, they were struggling a little bit. Um, you know, we didn't have this, uh, I think we forgot to put this on the list, but, um, one other thing worth mentioning is, uh, that Joel Erickson Eck injury. What's the deal? The Joel Erickson Eck owners are holding their breath. They're, they're nervous as we start to head into the fantasy playoff season. So I'm hoping you can give us some good news here. So right now, the, as much as the good news as I could give, it's not it's not really bad news. There's it's kind of being seen day to day. So we'll have to kind of wait and see until we get more updates on that. And then the interesting thing is, is that probably the obvious person is we would all guess it's uh, that would benefit from this is Ryan Hartman. And that is correct. He's Ryan Hartman is centering the line between Kaprizov and Boldy and took Erickson X wide in uh, the top power play. So really from there is that's kind of really the the big thing. They did have a call up from uh, a rookie, but right now I believe that that's really the biggest thing that Rossi is with Johansson and Zuccarello as the second wide. So really at this point, I would just be saying is that maybe if Hartman's rolling around, maybe you could get something. I believe he has either a goal and assist already today. So that's probably going to be the biggest takeaway and then just stay a point to the news on uh once we get more on Erickson Act. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Whew. We managed to, to remember to add that one in there. Obviously an important bit of news here before the end. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. We have wrapped up another show. Uh, always such a pleasure to be on the air with you, Shams. Um, Thank you all for joining and listening. Uh, please be sure to give us a follow at Short Shifts KK. Uh, Brian and Elon can be found at Keeping Carlson. Uh, please use gamedaytweets.com to get all the best info from Twitter, uh, including team by team lists, uh, goalie projections uh, for starters, and searchable tweets by player name. Uh, visit that site and the other great sites we use to research our episodes at Yahoo, Frozen Tools, and Natural Stat Trick. Our intro and outro music was created by Pat Roach. And until we see you next time, play smart and keep your shifts. Sure.